Reggie would need more than a sword on the road now, the ranger told him. He offered the king his best bow, a gift from his guild. The ranger's best bow was little more than rotten twig and frayed string, but Reggie was grateful that he hadn't been offered the other one. The elder had started placing quests on the village notice board. Getting the old rat to part with some coin was no bad idea, considering the funds needed to rebuild the Crimson Fort. The grub infestation had spread. The farm basement was overrun. The farmer should be able to squeeze bug juice in peace. With the path to Longtail Village free of frogs, the builders could start repairs on the Crimson Fort's bridge. With the paths left unguarded, grubs had crawled to the surface. The builders couldn't work while they're there. The builders could start their repairs in safety. The Crimson Fort would soon be able to welcome visitors again. His brother's chef was glad to be home, but the smith was still missing. 
the chef believed he might have also been captured. Maybe the elder knew where. The village had already started repairs. It would soon be as if the frogs had never come. The guard captain who had recovered, had spread word of the king's rescue of the elders. To show their gratitude, the villagers would help rebuild the rat fort. Not so lucky this time. The elder hadn't seen the frogs with the smith. But maybe the ever-vigilant rangers had seen where the frogs had gone. Young Robin had been headed to the ranger's lodge. Maybe Reggie could ask there. The farmer had fled his grub-infested basement in terror. He was sure they would destroy his bug-juicing machine before long. Reggie assured the farmer he would not let that happen.
The grubs were gone. The farmer could now make the best freshly squeezed bug juice in all raptum. Reggie liked it with bits. His royal ancestors had lifted rats from such places. No rat had dwelt here for years. The head ranger saw the smith taken to the tower by the foul Swamp Slayer clan. But the frogs had barricaded the path. Only a heavy two-handed axe would shatter it.
Nothing like the feel of an axe smashing through tough wood. Reggie wondered if it would do the same to frog shields. And frog skulls. was excited to help the king. An unforgettable tale to tell his children one day. The smith's hammer. He would never have dropped it willingly. grateful for his help. He needed to get to his brother as fast as possible. Would he find him still alive in the tower? The smith was alive, but the key to his freedom was held by Blocky Magoo, merciless leader of the Swamp Slayers. He squatted atop the tower, croaking orders to his clan. 
the village would soon be a ruin, and the frog spawn would feast on the dead. corpse of Blocky Magoo lay lifeless on the floor. He had croaked his last orders. Free of his chains, the smith would return to the Crimson Fort. The ranger would return to the lodge to begin to rebuild his guild. The young king thought he'd best check in on them both.
poison. Applied to any blade, it could affect enemies of any size, giving Reggie a much needed advantage. More grubs in the sewers. Reggie looked forward to a day when being king didn't involve so much time in sewers. Ranger thanked Reggie for his rescue, but he still needed help. This infestation was of a size he'd never seen before.
The young king hoped that was the last of them, and that the smell would wash off his armor. Was there no place the grubs would not infest? Even the sewers were overrun. Any more of them in the kingdom would stink like the froglands. The young ranger warned the king what he was about to walk into. Grubs like these were not to be underestimated. were gone, and the stench was contained. <laughs> 